We're back with Kate Elizabeth for 321. Let's get right into it. Story number three reported by Echo News. Kate Elizabeth, do you have any phobias? Like, is there anything that you're afraid of? Spiders. You're afraid of spiders? I hate spiders. They're so gross. They creep me out. I know any that I would be encountering where I live are completely harmless, but I don't know. You have too many legs and you're gross. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you have too many legs? <laughs> what is with your excessive legs and your creeping and they don't crawl in sync? They're all no, I can't I can't with spiders. It's have you seen arachnophobia? Uh no, I haven't. Okay, not. okay, okay. You should see that movie. You're probably you'll probably really appreciate it. <sighs> well, in the town of Landon, which is located in Essex County in England, town council is concerned about things that are going on at night. And there's a 30 year old resident who wished to remain anonymous in the story. And they're warning people, be careful, Kate, be careful what you do at night. What do you think is happening? That's causing concern. Um, be careful what you do at night. I'm going to say it's some sort of like mischief night esque thing. Like you find after Halloween where people are toilet papering trees and throwing eggs. Very close. There's a gang of clowns driving around in a van playing eerie music. Okay, I am not one of those people that's like terrified of clowns, but that would creep me out if it was like that out of context. <laughs> well, apparently four people in clown costumes, they've been driving around at night. They've got a speaker on top of the van. They play creepy music as they drive by people's houses. And some people are actually afraid to leave their homes because of this. And apparently this is a worldwide phenomenon. Apparently, apparently there is a creepy clown phenomenon going back years. They say it originated in the U.S. And I don't know if this is a coincidence, but this current story I told you about happened in Essex County in England back in 2016 in the town of Essex, Ontario. So, again, it might be just coincidence. There were two clowns spotted just walking around at night. And we actually got a picture. Do you have that picture, Joel? Look at that. So this is courtesy of CTV News and Carrie Deemer. So those were two clowns just strolling around Essex, Essex, uh, Essex Ontario at night, much like the story that, that's happening now. What's your thought on this apparent clown hysteria? So I don't have a fear of clowns. That picture made it seem very not scary because that looked like they were just going to the basketball court or something. <laughs> that yes, that's, they're 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 playing the clown game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just feel like, um, well, one, I'm I'm sure the movie it had some sort of wonderful resurgence hand in this, but I I don't get creeped out by that. If I saw four of them in a car out of context playing creepy music, I feel like that would throw me. But I do know people that like have. A severe clown phobia situation people get really really scared so um i don't know if they're doing it in fun or to terrorize people with that phobia <laughs> but that picture just made it seem like that guy was just hanging out so <laughs> that one that wouldn't creep me out at all <laughs> so okay so let's say that you're in essex ontario canada and you're strolling down the sidewalk and here come two clowns. It's like, you know, I don't know, nine o'clock at night. What are you doing? Are you like, uh, you know, giving them a peace sign or something? High five? Like, what are you doing? I don't know if I'm like excited to see them. I kind of feel like, like when I lived in New York and you would go to Times Square and there were guys dressed like Elmo doing photo ops and stuff, you'd, I'd want to dodge them. So I'd probably cross the street, not out of fear, <laughs> but just because like, I don't want to deal with that because you're clearly seeking some sort of attention and I'm not looking to give it right. to Right. You. You're like, I'm not in the mood for silly string in my hair. I don't need none of this shit right now. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I'm usually gotcha. going from point A to point B, you know? <laughs> Good to know. Let's move on to story number two. This is reported by King five news. Have you ever witnessed somebody shoplifting? I have. I have. I worked my first job ever. I was 16 years old and I worked at Burlington coat factory. This is a good one. Okay. He tried to stuff a comforter, I think, like in, in his up, pants, up his like up his shirt. Basically, it was either a comforter or it was one of those like down jackets that is basically a comforter. You know, like the very heavy winter jackets that go like to your ankles all the way up. Uh -huh. so he had shoved it under his shirt. We thankfully like had security, but I saw that guy try to leave the store in the most blatant way possible. There were other things that people, you know, trying to like sneak a lip gloss or whatever. Uh -huh. um, but that was by far the the weirdest one that I ever saw. 
I mean, how did he think he was going to get anywhere? Clearly, you could tell that he had something big under his shirt, right? I don't know. And I guess I just assumed that guy was probably under the influence of something, but he was he was not, apparently. Our security team had, like, a really fun time with that, to be honest. I'm going to guess that later that night, he went to a hotel and... <laughs> Put a sheet over himself. <laughs> Put a sheet over himself. <laughs> then he's calling police because he spots a lion in the bushes. That's right. That's what happened. That's what That's happened. That's exactly what happened. Well, in this story, there's a 70-year-old man. He was at a grocery store in Gig Harbor, Washington. His name is Patrick Lathrop. He spotted a man and his wife loitering near one of the store entrances. They had a cart full of stuff, and he's pretty sure these people are up to no good. You know, they're up to no good. They're going to steal that shit. They're looking for their, for their, uh, for their moment to leave. So he decided I'm going to take action. He blocked the exit with his grocery cart. He demanded to see their receipt. He told store employees, Hey, you got to watch these people. You got to get the receipt. They tried to claim that they weren't stealing anything. What did Mr. Lathrop do next? Oh, what did he do next? He, this was at a grocery store at a grocery store. He threw the produce at them. Not a bad guess. He shot the guy. What? Yep. So an argument had started because he's accusing them of uh, of theft and they're denying it. It escalated into a fight. Mr. Lathrop then decided to pull out a gun. He shot the victim once. The victim was taken to hospital and he was treated for non-life-threatening injuries, which is good. Police confirmed with store employees that the victim and his wife didn't actually steal anything, nor were they suspected of stealing. And Mr. Th uh, Lathrop, he was booked into county jail. He pleaded not guilty to first-degree assault. Bail was set at $100,000, but there's more, Kate. There's more. So last year, Mr. Lathrop was working for Pizza Hut, and he returned from a delivery, and he saw a guy that he thought was trying to break into cars. You know, he saw him earlier trying to open up doors and stuff, and he thought, this guy's trying to break into cars, and I need to do something about it. He confronted the guy. Surprise, surprise, he shot him too. That's what he did. I guess this is what he does whenever he has. Boy, imagine if this guy disagreed with your wrestling opinions. I know. My goodness. I don't want to even think about where I would be. But the problem is I think he thinks he's like he's out sc settling scores for justice. You know what he's I mean? Like he has it in his head. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That he's on the side of right. But people just trying to go grocery shopping and drive their cars home. Yep. The victim in that case was treated at the hospital and he didn't cooperate with police. So maybe he was up to no good because he wouldn't cooperate with police. So Mr. Lathrop got away from that one. No charges were filed on that one. But fascinating. Gun control, Kate. Gun control. We're not in the, the right country for that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Mr. Lathrop from wherever the hell that was, Gig Harbor, Washington, he probably wants to keep it that way, I imagine. Let's yeah. go on to story number one. Uh, this is reported by w, uh, DW.com, I should say, DW.com. So there's a 39-year-old woman in Germany, and she has a friends with benefits relationship with a 42-year-old man. They met online, you know, began a casual sexual relationship. You know what happens in these situations, right, Kate? She developed feelings for the guy, and she knew that he didn't want a committed relationship. So she was interested, but he wasn't. Kate Elizabeth, what did the lady do? Um, I'm going to say contacted his mother about it somehow. Fascinating <laughs> answer. <laughs> and probably, it. probably a better answer because what she really did was she poked holes in a package of condoms hoping to get pregnant. I've heard about this happening before. I've heard stories like this. Yep. Yikes. She she ended up telling the guy that she believed that she was pregnant. Fortunately, I guess for him, she was not. She admitted to damaging the condoms. Now, this guy's reaction in Germany, this guy's reaction was historic. Made history, Kate. First time ever. How do you think this made history? Uh, he shot her. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the theme between the story we talked about before where the guy wouldn't go down on the woman <laughs> She went insane between the guy who's out here, just people trying to grocery shop and shooting. Let's just go for it. He shot her. Okay, something tells me that if that's what he did, it would not have made history. They would have just added it to the list. Fair so enough. this made history because he decided to call police and press charges. 
prosecutors, they didn't know what charges to file against her. Like they weren't sure what yeah. to do. They didn't know. Does it fit under rape? Does it fit under like criminal stealthing? Uh, so the judge eventually decided that they were going to charge her with sexual assault. They decided sexual assault is fitting for this. They charged her with that. She was found guilty and she got a six month suspended sentence. Uh, the judge said as part of the, I, I guess when he gave her the sentence, he said, no means no here as well. Yeah. That's what they said. Personal question, have you ever had a friends with benefits type relationship? And if so, was there ever a problem where one of you developed feelings for the other? Yes, and then no. It was casual, but uh, I think it, because of the stage of my life that I was in, it was like early 20s. So I don't think, I think we were both on the same page about it not being serious, just in, neither of us were looking for that with each other or in general. Um, and it was also long distance. So there was just kind of like an automatic barrier in that way too. Oh man, it's so easy. You just don't respond to the text message. Yeah, we were like, we're actually still friends to this day. Like it was, it was very much an understood thing with where we were at. Fascinating. So I guess I'll just, I'll just go one step further. So let's say that in that situation, the guy developed feelings for you, told you he had feelings for you. And just so you can't get off the hook, it was not a long distance relationship. What would Kate Elizabeth do in that situation? I would cut and run <laughs> because of a few things. One, it also depends on the approach. Like if you're poking holes and cons, that's obviously like, I'm so out of here. If someone's just communicating their feelings for you, I think you just have to scale back and put new boundaries in place and whatever. So it, it really depends on um, how it's communicated to you, what's done about it. Like if you're two adults in a reasonable situation, I think you can just revert back to it being a friendship and maybe you're in less contact so that um, you're not doing emotional damage along the way. But if somebody's like trying to hook you, but to get you pregnant, there's no, you do what that guy did and you press charges. I think that's a, a very fair thing to take legal action if somebody is trying to force children upon you in some way. I am going to make sure that your overlay for your podcast at the bottom says, I would cut and run. <laughs> Please do. Let them know. <laughs> All right. That's it for three, two, one. Once again, I would like to thank uh, Kate Elizabeth. This was awesome. Let's do this again. Yes, absolutely. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you.